Did you know Citizen Kane and Cocaine Bear have the exact same number of letters? Hello, I'm Ryan Donato. Hello, hello, welcome to a review that I'm so excited about because I feel so vindicated because I made my most anticipated list. I did not do a video about it. I was sick for the whole first month of the year, so I didn't really do anything but watch movies. I did make my most anticipated list and Cocaine Bear was in the top five. It was like M. Night and then four other movies, Barbie, Guardians of the Galaxy, Spider-Verse, and Cocaine Bear. And I was like, you could put these in any order and it would still probably makes sense. This is what I'm excited about. Cocaine Bear had me by the balls from the moment that I heard the title because obviously Cocaine Bear, haha, meme funny joke. But what really got me excited is this, this was going to be produced by Phil Lord and Chris Miller who are hilarious. Some of my favorite movies of the 2010s are from them. I know Cloudy with the Chance of Meatballs wasn't from the 2010s and it also isn't one of my favorite movies of the 2000s, but it's really good. Both 21 Jump Street movies and 22 Jump Street, obviously, yeah. Lego Movie is great. The second one, they just produced it, but still, it's got a great sense of humor and it's a really good little movie. Solo is a movie that I love and I know that they half directed that one and then obviously they get a lot of credit for Spider-Verse and Mitchell's versus the Machines. So I almost trust them more as producers than I do as directors and that's awesome because that means that they can touch more projects because they're not in solely invested in the ones that they're directing, you know, because they're able to expand. That being said, their best movies are the ones they directed. But this is directed by Elizabeth Banks who I think did a sequel or maybe two for Pitch Perfect. I think she did a segment in movie 43 but if we're gonna blame her for that then we can blame like so many people but she's all right she's very funny i really like her for that like i need martin scorsese to direct cocaine bear give it to whoever especially if phil lord and chris miller are producing it then i don't give a rip the cast is awesome r.i.p to ray liotta shout out to the idiot in behind me in the theater who when ray liotta showed up with r.i.p yeah i know buddy okay you don't need to advertise how you feel about a movie to everyone else in the theater if you're one of those people that when something happens you go jesus christ like we get it you are surprised i don't need to know how you feel about it that being said this is one of those type of movies where you kind of want to see with the crowd not for people to say r.i.p for ray liotta but you want people to react to the crazy gruesome things that the cocaine bear does and how funny it is and outrageous this movie is you want people to laugh and have a good time it's a b movie also in the cast we have ice cube's son o'shea jackson who i really like a lot he's good he's good in the Straight Outta Compton movie, which he is, and he's good in some other things, but the thing that I like to mention that no one ever really talks about is Den of Thieves. I think he's really good in that, especially for a movie that's supposed to be just a, like, stupid throwaway Gerard Butler action January flick. Also, I would love to bring up Alden Einrich, who is my young Solo. Hashtag make Solo 2 happen, guys, please. Yeah, I think he's really great. I, I loved him when I first saw him in Hail Caesar. Obviously, I think he's great in Solo, a Star Wars story. And anytime I get to see him now, I'm like really excited about it because we really did not give him a fair shake in this world. And then Carrie Russell is in this and she is smoking. Oh, also Brooklyn Prince, the little girl from uh, the Florida Project is in this. And I thought that was really funny. Move on to the anticipation. Let's get into the meat and potatoes of Coke. Cocaine Bear, this movie was excellent. It was everything that you would want this movie to meet. Is it Citizen Kane and like filmmaking quality and value and integrity? No, obviously it's not, it's Cocaine Bear, but for what you are buying a ticket to see, it's great and it's delivering. And I don't mean that in the same way that you're like, well, if I know what I'm going to see for a Transformers movie and it was so it was good, you know, <laughs> it had the robots and the fighting and the hot girls and explosion. This movie actually really delivers. It's a nice short little movie, it gets right to the point real quick we're not bsing time with characters that we don't care about there's plenty of characters in this movie that i do care about there's a cop you got me to care about a cop so awesome already but he is in love with this little dog that he has now or like not really but like he has to he kind of like evolves into really caring for this dog and that's so funny to me obviously carrie russell cares about her kids and she doesn't want her kids to die from the cocaine bear and the kids were actually really funny which it's funny because like kids are usually awful rarely do you see kids be actually really funny but this was like good boys in the sense that like that was like one of the funniest parts about the movie was the kids sitting there talking about cocaine all nine rick is paired up with o'shea jackson and i thought that was hilarious their relationship is really funny this movie didn't have me like crying or anything but i was invested when characters that i cared about looked like they were down and out i was like oh no at the end of the movie i felt like good good time like this is a really great time 
at the theater. The kills in this are really gruesome too, which is, you kind of want that. You kind of want this like over the top kind of deaths and you really get that in this movie. The bar is very low. Just be extremely funny throughout and have crazy shit happen and people are going to love this. And people seem to really be enjoying this. Obviously, if you don't find the title Cocaine Bear funny and you don't think that this sounds like a <laughs> goofy little concept, then you probably won't like this. But if you think that that sounds like a good time, then you're going to have a good time at this movie. Like I said, it really delivers full force. And I love this movie so much. My previous favorite movie of the year, because I still do my power rankings of the year. Previously, before I saw this movie, my number one movie of the year was Knock at the Cabin from M. Night. Obviously, I'm a big M. Night fan. I've seen that movie three times now. But my new favorite of the year is Cocaine Bear. I just think it works stronger for what it's trying to go for. Where I love Knock at the Cabin because I love M. Night and I love... Dave Batista and the performance is fantastic and the movie looks beautiful. This doesn't leave me wanting any more, whereas Knock at the Cabin, there was this little part of me, even though I gave it a 5 out of 5, that was like, mm, I don't know, I kind of wish that it was a little bit different some ways. This, I wouldn't change a thing. Raucous time at the theater. Go check this out on like a Friday night with some friends. Get lit, have some drinks, smoke a little bit, do whatever you like that's legal and good for you and safe for everybody. But have a great time. Cocaine Bear is a 5 out of 5. I love Cocaine Bear. What a win. What a cinema win for all of us. What's your favorite B-movie? Were you a Sharknado person? I never saw The Meg. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. By the way, Ant-Man Quantumania was like my 14th or 15th movie of the year that I saw, and it did not make my power rankings, which is the top 10 movies of the year. So that means it sucks.